What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to another creative process. Uh, some of these, I don't know why I turned, I put it to song. It's it's okay, we'll get there. Um, so this in particular looks at power words. So power words are, um, this is a bit of an adaptation from some marketing stuff. I know, I know. Uh, I picked it up along the way from doing research for this channel, actually. Uh, so before I started to jump into this industry, uh, as it were, it feels weird to think of it as an industry, but um, I just think of it as guidance and pretty freaking awesome because I'm, you know, the, standing on the shoulders of giants as it were. Um, but when it comes to tarot stuff, what I did was a couple months before I started my channel, uh, I watched the growth of other channels, which was brilliant. It was so good to see. I assembled the descriptions that from a lot of popular channels and I compared them and I looked at what worked uh, and what how they tweaked it and changed it and it was so humbling to watch these channels grow and to expand and it was so good that I put it all into a chart and I mean like what is discourse analysis with that it's a wasted opportunity if you don't have it in an excel chart I mean really um, but I put it into a chart and I looked through the descriptions and how they talked about their work but then I started to move on to headlines because I noticed a specific pattern through I think it was about I want to say like 50 channels that I was looking through um, and I was analyzing all of these different titles and I noticed that one of the things that they all had in common were power words. There was a power word in each of these titles. I don't know if they realized that they were doing it or not, but, uh, and even on my channel now, I hesitate to do that with every single one because I want the room for my creativity and I'm stubborn, <laughs> stubborn AF. So I watched a couple different, uh, I watched series from, you know, like Pat Flynn. Uh, there were others, I mean, his is more relative to podcasting, but I looked at things uh, like from Channel Maker, uh, you know, and then there was also Think Media, Think Media Podcast. Um, there was also, uh, those were the two and uh, VidIQ as well with the with getting the titles. Like there were these, the, those were the ones that came up relative to titles and ranking. Um, Think Media in particular nailed this. Now we're going to get to how this is a creative process. I promise, but this is just the bare bones of it. So like my tarot peeps, if you're watching, I just hope that uh, this offers some help, right? But this, so these power words, right? power words uh, making sure that you have at least one in a title you don't have to go ham and like pack as many in as you can but include one because I've noticed the ones the channels that are growing the most exponentially in terms of the tarot community were the ones that included one of these titles uh, or one of these words and it's almost like that's that's the it's from the website rank math uh, so it is I'll put it up here uh, it is rankmath.com slash blog slash power dash words um, so it's looking at how to rank higher in the algorithm and it's like these little tweaks ultimately your content matters more so it's not gonna fix anything like if you have a system that needs tweaking altogether uh, that's a whole other ball game but these little uh, these little tips can help you right so um, making sure that they include one of these power words now we're gonna flip it over to the more spiritual side of things so my tarot community uh, if any of you watch this is a great way to up 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 the rank <laughs> so just uh, be mindful of that and it also it's not to do this so don't do this from a disingenuous place this isn't to encourage that uh, this creative process is to look at how you can can use this tool and I wanted to put that out there that it was something that I started to see um, and uh, and and I analyzed across different channels and things like that so that was really cool to see the pattern start to emerge um, but there's so much like this I printed the sheet like there's like so many different and this is like three across so like there's a lot to choose from here <laughs> there's a lot to choose from oh, just a disclaimer some of these words make me they I question why they're power words um, YouTube has its own reasoning and rationale for them being power words so um, you know, I don't know that, but just know that some of them in here, like there's, uh, you know, abuse is a power word. Um, there was, there's just other things in here that are kind of, I'm like, why would that be a power word? And I don't know the reason why. So I, I'm not going to jump to conclusions about that and be like, Err, because they have their own reasons. It's fine. Right. Let them have their own reasons. Um, the point of this is just more to say, take the ones that resonate and use those. Uh, Cause there's a lot in here that I, I see that already evoke, that are evocative of readings that I've already read or experienced and, and all of that. So take that and run with it. Some people may
might say you're not a product, you're not a commodity. You shouldn't be taking these on and using them as identities or, or an affirmation. I say the systems are gonna exist regardless of whether we do anything about them. So I, you know, I open my social media feed and the things that I've searched for or that are related, sometimes it's a little weird. I'm like, okay, that has literally nothing to do with what I looked up. And you know, you can see the systems like phishing a little bit to see what you'll bite at. Um, but if I open up my social media and a lot of what I see tells me who I am, it reflects back something based on algorithms and data. And they've talked about this relative to mental health and social media. So for me, a, a creative process that's a little bit of an act of resistance, um, because I got to get that in there. <laughs> um, one of my uncles, uh, this guy said, uh, that, um, God loves the rebel. And I really truly believe that. And I think that this is a way that we can kind of take what is a system that's not necessarily great and use it for our personal benefit um, to help ourselves develop strength to resist systems that might try to define us. Now, this is something that I've done as well. So this is kind of reverse engineering affirmations, right? I'm, I'm giving you some secret sauce. <laughs> uh, maybe not really, but um, I use this though. And I think of ways that I can embody that word. And Morgan Harper Nichols is a brilliant poet book there, um, but, uh, poet and, and author in other ways, but uh, check out her Instagram page. Um, so good. But she does this every year and does like a word. And I was doing this too. And then I was like, well, but other people are doing it too. So I want to give that shout out to them. Um, so she does this and you pick a word that you want to embody every year, right? That you want to embody um, as you go through. Um, so, you know, when you think of this, think about embodying a specific word as part of an affirmative uh, way of seeing yourself and beliefs that you have that you're either learning or unlearning or relearning uh, or adopting, right? So taking these power words and, and turning it on its head in a way that helps you, right? Um, cause you're more than, you're more than what shows up in your feed and you're more than what shows up in, in, you know, marketing tip offs from apps that talk to each other and all of that stuff. These systems are going to be here regardless. So we might as well take what we can from them and make the best of ourselves so that we can, you know, say like, I'm not going to let an algorithm tell me who I am. The ranking isn't just about what Google wants to rank for or have, you know, that that's, it's not imposed necessarily by them. It's also what people search for. So it's keeping that in mind too. So when you look through this list, it's understanding that this can also connect to, to needs that other people have, but they might also connect to needs that you have. So that's where it's understanding how when you sort of reverse engineer this, you can also use these different tools to build a life for yourself that is brilliant and amazing. Um, and also just to help build up yourself. And this is the, again, the brilliant part of the creative process and why I'm sharing all of these tools is because I want people to have what helped me inserting these words into affirmations and building affirmations around the words it's further down on the website page so you're gonna have to scroll down towards the bottom to get to that list but I'll put the I'll put the website here uh, across the bottom so that you can see it while I read through this you can look it up if you want but um, you know if you were to say for example um, approved right one of them right here is approved you could say I, I love and approve of myself uh, you could say uh, better uh, I'm I'm great and getting better every day my life expands in brilliant ways is getting better and better every day um, you know in terms of uh, authority you could say I am the only, I am my best authority on the, the contents of my life and I'm so excited at the direction it's headed because now that I take ownership of the authority that I have I can step into and fully appreciate my life for me I can build it for me that's a longer affirmation but still like these ways of looking at your life taking these tools that you know inform algorithms and taking them and, and building your own life with that so when I was a kid I read the dictionary uh, Right up until I was in my 20s, I still did it. I just have this love of words. I, I envision entire worlds from the words. And when I was really young, this was probably, I was, uh, I wanna say like, I was in grade four. I was reading the dictionary, just like picking out words and, and you know, this whole galaxy, this whole cosmos came to life for me from words. And I was not just creating stories in my head, but like, um, looking at what the words meant and, and how they informed a whole bunch of different things. Even in my 20s, I still read the dictionary in a way because I read this book and I just fell in love with that process all over again. Um, so anyways, in fact, I still have it. I still have the dictionary that I read from. It's this one right here. 
uh, it's it's a little worse for wear over the years, but um, I you know loved it. And one of the things that I love about this power words is taking the words and building out building out reflections for yourself. So the first pr part of this process is word association. So pick a power word from the list uh, that's there. And then what you can do from that is, so pick a word and do a kind of dump, like do a, a mind, just like pff, put it all on the page. What do you associate? Uh, free association. Do a free association with the word. What do you associate with it? So once you have this brain dump out, what you're going to want to do is do um, a mind map. So build a mind map out and pick a couple different associations that really evoke a feeling for you that really evoke some kind of uh, either emotion that's positive or if you want to do reflection and some shadow work you can also do a more negative right and negative is all relative right it's all vibration um, negative is just the way that you might look at it initially and say well that doesn't feel good this could be a good way to look at why, right? So once you finish the mind map, then what you're gonna wanna do is journal about this and ask yourself, why does this word feel the way that it does? What memories does this word bring up? And just a side note here, okay? Like don't feel like you have to push away uh, the, the feelings. And if you need help, don't deny yourself that. Don't do this process if you're in the midst of something that requires more professional help. Honoring yourself is so important. Allowing yourself to get that help and, and reaching out when you do need it is also part of honoring yourself just as much. So as you journal about this, uh, you know, feel into where you are with that word. And that's how this can also become a great process for reflection. It comes down to uh, the, the fact that algorithms are going to dictate so much of our experience and our existence. They already do. Right, A lot of people's behaviors can be predicted down to the nth degree. And that can be really terrifying because then where is your freedom in things, right? Like where's your autonomy, your sovereignty? Where, is, where does all of that exist? Um, so this is my own process uh, of saying in the face of what seems to be this sort of predictability machine, um, you know, no, you're not going to tell me who I am. I'm still going to engage in a creative process that makes, unmakes, remakes, shapes myself and co-creates in the world, right? It's all of these predictive things can get in the way and make us feel like, well, it can make us feel uh, a little bit, you know, not just isolated, but despondent when it comes to our dreams. Because if you look at all of the ways that, and this is why and where mental health makes this so challenging, right? So um, there's a lot of books about this too. This isn't just, you know, some, it's not some conspiratorial, uh, you know, rant. There are a book, there are quite a few books and I'll put them here, uh, you know, once I pull them uh, from my reading lists and things, but um, there are books that talk about this too. So that is this week's creative process. Just a little tip. These are little tools, little tools that we take from the daily creative readings and my own process that has helped me and that I want to help you if I want to give this shit away because it's just take it, run with it. So that is your creative process for this week. Um, take it, run with it. I hope that it helps you. This is stuff that I've used in my own process um, and ways that I've, you know, uh, really gotten into um, seeing life as a co-creative adventure, not just from a law of attraction perspective, but also just from a generative perspective and a regenerative awareness that we can bring to our every day. This is where it starts. This is where we can get into uh, the power of being able to make and shape our worlds, right? Because um, you define you, you make up you. So that's where we're at. <laughs> So if this resonated, please give it a like and subscribe. I'd love to have you on the channel if you're not already. But if you are joining me from my channel subscriber base, thank you so much. It means so much that you're here and I am so grateful. I really appreciate you. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and if, as always, <laughs> wherever this finds you on the time space, continue on morning, afternoon or night. I hope that it finds you very well, my friends. Take care.